Hello listeners, and welcome to A Dash of Salt with AJ. I'm your host, Ahsoka Jackson. Alright, so we've got to talk about the Tibers and Magoth. This element of the episode, and a key thing regarding the Grice family, which Colt and Falco are part of, those are areas where, again, it was really the commentary and insight of fellow viewers that explained things to me here. I did understand to some extent that they were talking in code, but okay, let me just deal with the scenes sequentially here. Now, when they were looking at the statue of Helos, I think that part was pretty straightforward regarding the dialogue and all. The main, more subtle thing I noticed is that use of the term or name, Devil of All Earth. I'm pretty sure that's also what's referenced in Marley's version of history, which Grisha's father passed on to him. They said that Ymir, the very first Titan, was a girl who basically made a deal with the Devil of All Earth and gained the powers that way. I've said before that I figure the truth lies somewhere between Marley's version and the Eldian Restorationist version. In any case, this whole thing makes me wonder if they're saying that the devil of all Earth that was slain by Helos is the same one that the original Ymir supposedly met nearly 2,000 years ago, or if someone else had inherited that name, title, or reputation by the time Helos came along. And something I didn't catch until the second viewing is that info card that they show right before commercial breaks. The one after that statue scene established that Helos was apparently a real person whom the Tiber family had collaborated with about a century ago when they chose to turn their backs on the rest of Eldia and support the Marlians in the Great Tyne War. Now, speaking of Helos, I did look the name up <coughs> because I immediately figured the etymology or origin of the name would be significant. It kind of sounded vaguely familiar to me. Now, there is an ancient town named Helos and that town itself was supposedly founded by a son of Perseus. Perseus was a demigod and hero from Greek mythology, and he was renowned for slaying monsters. One of the monsters he killed was the Medusa, one of the women with serpents for hair and the power to turn people to stone if they looked upon her. So yeah, with the whole monster slaying aspect, I'm guessing that is the particular source of inspiration Isayama had in mind for this. Pretty cool, eh? Anyways, back to the actual conversation. This is definitely the most that I've liked uh, Commander slash General Maga so far, and it was once again an educational experience. We already saw some of the general attitude back in episode one of this season, where a soldier was like, how did I manage to get shot? You Eldians are supposed to be soaking up the bullets for us. But this makes it even clearer. Marley has largely been using Eldians and the conquered armies of other nations to prosecute its wars. With that in mind, I think Magath is dead on correct here. If the war is something that most citizens of Marley can just look upon with mild interest and satisfaction as they reap the benefits from it while feeling very little of the pain, no wonder they're content with the constant warmongering. So I don't know whether he would actually succeed in getting the draft reinstated, but I do agree with him that it might be a really good reality check for the people of Marley, and they might well lose their appetite for war when the blades and bullets end up in their own guts here. And that was a pretty good exchange about... uh, what Magath and the theatrical Tiber each took from the statue. It actually reminds me of that bit from scripture where Christ talks about pretty whitewashed tombs that are filled with the bones of dead men. That's a pretty haunting image the more you think of it. It makes me think of those catacombs I've seen. In any case, I do wonder about one thing a little. If Magath is saying it's already too late, doesn't that make all of this pointless? But then I guess it's still worth a try. You still won't know for certain until you actually do attempt it, and that's at least a better course of action than just passively standing by or continuing your grand march of madness down the same path you already know is destroying you. Now, moving ahead. Ah, gotta take a quick second to talk about the banquet. It was really interesting to see what good terms the Tiber family is on when it comes to dignitaries from other nations. Willie clearly grew up with these folks as childhood friends, so he was schmoozing around in the circles of power and influence from a young age. He also clearly has the sort of gracefulness and charisma needed to influence people and smooth things over after other folks botched them up. But did you hear that music playing in the background as he talked about having come up with a grand plan that'll just solve everything in one fell swoop? Yeah, hmm, this should be interesting. And we had the children in that scene too. It already made me kind of nervous how they were dashing around like this was an Olympic sporting event. That doesn't seem like the best combo when you're talking about delicate tableware, expensive clothes, and red wine. I'm just saying. And of course, people were busy talking trash, but it's not like they were actually letting that stop them from being served, right? Don't you just love it when folks are like that? I will say this much. 
Do you really think it's a good idea to mistreat folks who are handling your food? You could also reverse engineer that and note the sheer blasé arrogance of people who kept slaves and everything and expected them to do the cooking and similar tasks. You're going to horribly abuse someone and then go tell them to prepare your food? My, 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 aren't we the confident one? In any case, I think we finally got a glimpse of something I had been wondering about since season three. Um, had referenced Marley's enemies in the East that the Restorationists had wanted to link up with. We had this representative from a place called Hizur, and between the name of the location and the kimono she was wearing, it definitely seems like this is more or less going to be a country resembling Japan within the Attack on Titan universe. So things are getting pretty global here. We've now gone from thinking there was only a single nation of humanity left upon the face of the planet, to now also having the Middle East, Africa, and the Far East. And I mentioned before that our original group of people within the walls themselves pretty much seemed to be a mix of European ancestry and Asian ancestry, with the latter ranging from the Mediterranean to maybe Middle East, I figure. It was established before uh, that folks from the Far East, like Mikasa's mother, were a rarity within the walls. Anyways, it was definitely nice to see someone actually treating Eldians well for once, and she was really quick on her feet as well. I am definitely liking this lady so far. Hopefully things hold up well if we get to see more of her. Returning to the topic of Willie and Magath, we have the second conversation that takes place. Now, this is the one where I really missed a lot of it, and it was extremely helpful to see other folks' discussion on it. Now, I could tell that they were speaking in code, and I vaguely got that the bits about the run infrastructure weren't necessarily talking about the buildings and all. But the main thing I really caught myself was the mention of rats. That basically refers to traitors or infiltrators. That I can recognize. And then the fact that they promptly cut to Aaron right after that sentence made me chuckle a bit. It's like on the one hand, they know, but on the other hand, they have no freaking idea. Like, as far as rodents go, our boy's more on the scale of a capybara, or at least those 30-inch squirrels that they have in different parts of Asia. Though, to be fair, a single rat can cause a pretty crazy amount of damage all by itself. <laughs> in any case, what other folks in comments and vids explained for me is this. The episode basically establishes the incompetence and corruption within the Marlian military structure. We see Magath watching in annoyance and exasperation as Reiner, someone who's been to Paradise Island himself, tries to lay out things for one of the folks in charge during that strategy session. And although I still hold to what I said about how I think Reiner was deliberately trying to sort of confuse the guy by making all of the options sound sort of shaky, I also did say that he was technically just being thorough and making sure the guy was considering all the factors, right? <laughs> But I think the point from other folks was that the guy he was talking to still should have been able to make use of or process the info. Or at the very least, he should have respected it rather than being dismissive of someone like Reiner, who was familiar with the location and was making very relevant, reasonable points regarding what their options, regarding what their options were strategically. And of course we have Galliard and the others afterwards being like, okay, these guys are slow. And come to think of it, I think this is... Uh, also sort of a subtle indicator of how Marley has been overly reliant upon the Eldians, and especially the Titan Shifters, plus the Pure Titans. They haven't had to birth very nuanced, careful military strategies when they can literally just drop some Titans in the battlefield and pretty much nuke the place. Plus, we've seen that the Titan Shifters themselves have to work very hard to earn their positions, and of course, even then, they get dismissed and treated like garbage. But basically, they're the ones who can't afford to be slackers due to the pressure placed upon them. All right, listeners, thanks for hanging with me today. We've still got lots left to discuss regarding Tiber, Magath, and what their plans mean for the Marlene government and military. Plus, there are some interesting questions and theories folks have about where Reiner and Falco fit into this whole situation that's about to reach a tipping point. Is it possible that Eren may actually recruit them? Indeed, might he have already recruited young Falco? We'll discuss this in the upcoming episodes. But in the meantime, if you're enjoying the podcast, please don't forget to subscribe and turn your notifications on so you get updates. Plus, you can help make the podcast more visible for new listeners by leaving a like, share, or review on whichever platform you use to listen. YouTube, Spotify, Radio Public, etc. Now, be blessed and stay salty.